Hello children. We are in a chapter called Surface Area and Volumes. It is the last chapter in mathematics. In this chapter, there are four subunits. The subunits are surface area of combination of solids. We already know that what is combination of solids. If two or more solids they combine together, we call it the mass combination of solids. And we know the solids also cuboid, hemisphere, sphere. cylinder cone are solids when we combine these two solids any two solids we get combination of solids the first unit we studied about surface area of combination of solids and we solve all the problems related to exercise 15.1 and this particular exercise is based on fifth uh, surface area of combination of solids now the second part is volume of combination of solids volume of combination of solids in the case of combination of solids how to find the volume of the solids and the third subunit is conversion of solids from one shape to another shape and the fourth one is first term of a cone all these things we are going to study in this particular chapter and this chapter is very important chapter for public examination because of scoring purpose because the problems are lengthier problem and uh, we are going to get problems of 3 marks and 4 marks bigger problems therefore all majority of the problems are application type of problem therefore your utmost concentration is required to solve solve problems i already solved some of the problems of exercise 5.1 and 15.1 and 15.2 and before solving the problems it is better to recall what all i we studied related to the formula of different solids this particular chart you have seen already in this chart there are different solids are mentioned cuboid cylinder cone sphere hemisphere and today's class and we are going to talk we are going to solve the problems of volume therefore uh, give your attention towards the formula of volume volume of a cuboid is equal to lbh volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r square h volume of a cone is equal to 1 by 3 pi r square h volume of a sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube volume of the hemisphere is 2 by 3 pi r cube and i am in the exercise 15.2 i already solved five problems in this exercise now i am in the sixth problem first read the problem properly and solve along with the video see the video and you can solve by yourself by solving like that you can definitely score good marks in the public examination because all these problems are Little bit of application type. You have to apply your mind to understand the problem. See here, um, a solid iron pole, solid iron pole consists of a cylinder of height 220 centimeter and base diameter is 24 centimeter. Reading only you can understand. Diameter given means you have to find the uh, what is known as radius, which is surmounted by another cylinder of height 60 cm and radius 8 cm find the mass of the pole see it is a physics game here find the mass of the pole given that 1 cubic cm of iron has approximately 8 grams of mass the see, volume and the mass the relation also given in this particular problem and he mentioned that use pi is equal to 3.14 instead of 22 by 7 right 3.14 First, we analyze the problem. See what is what he is telling is there is a pole which is in the shape of a cylinder. The height of the cylinder is height of the cylinder is two twenty centimeter. That is the height. See the diagram, you can understand. Height is two twenty. Diameter is twenty four centimeter. Once diameter is given, we can uh, find what radius. Height is the given part. We write height is two twenty centimeter. Diameter is equal to 24 centimeter. That is given. Therefore, radius is equal to 12 centimeter. Half of the diameter is nothing but radius. Radius is equal to 12 centimeter. First given part is over data. The next part, what he is telling is, which is surmounted above that. Another cylinder is there. Above that, there is another cylinder of height 60 centimeter. The height of the second cylinder is 60 centimeter. 
radius is 8 cm. We can easily understand. Radius of the first cylinder is 12. It is a bigger, bigger radius. The radius of the second one is 8. It is smaller. There are two cylinders put together to make a pole. And it is made by iron. Now what we have to do? We have to find the total volume of this particular pole. The pole comprises of two cylinders. One is bigger cylinder, another one is smaller cylinder. Bigger cylinder is of radius 12 cm and height is 220 cm. Smaller cylinder is radius is 8 cm and height is 60 cm. How to find the volume of the pole? There are two cylinders. Add the volume of the two cylinders, you get the total volume of the pole. Therefore, the first thing is write the given part. The height is equal to 60 and radius is equal to 8. That is the second pole. Therefore, total volume of the pole, the pole is equal to volume of first cylinder plus volume of second cylinder. It is very simple. What is the formula for the volume of a cylinder? The volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r square h. Where there is only one kind of solid is given. Therefore, I written the formula and put a box for the formula. Volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r square h. How many cylinders are there? Two cylinders are there. One cylinder height is 220 and the radius is 12. Another cylinder is there, height is 60 and radius is 8 cm. Apply that. And uh, pi for the value of pi, you have to substitute 3.14. Then is multiplication, that's all. Volume of the first cylinder is equal to 3.14, that is the value of pi. 12 into 12, that is radius, 12 square. R square is required, therefore 12 into 12 into h. H is 220. This is of the first cylinder, plus. Volume of the second cylinder means 3.14, that is pi, r square, radius is 8, 8 into 8, height is 60. Now we have to multiply it. When you multiply this, you get two numbers. One is 99,475.2 plus um, 12,057.6. Add these two. You get 1,11,532.8 cubic centimeter. This is the total volume of the pole. The pole comprises of two cylinders. And when you find the volume of both the cylinders and add them, you get the total volume of the pole. The pole, volume of the pole is obtained. Now we have to find what is known as the mass. What is the given? Mass of 1 cc of iron is 8 grams. Mass of 1 cc of iron is 8 grams approximately they are given. Now how much, what is the mass of the pole? We calculate, sorry, what is the volume of the pole we calculated? Volume of the pole we, we calculated as 1,11,532.8 cubic centimeter. Therefore, for 1 cc it is 8 grams. Therefore, for 1,11,532.8 cc, how many? Let multiply it. When you multiply this, you get 8,92,262.4 grams. Very big number. Instead of writing in the gram, because it is a very heavy pole, instead of writing in the grams, it is better to write in kg. 1 kg is equal to how many grams? 1000 grams. Therefore, divide this by 1000. Means, you have to take the decimal point, 3 numbers before. Therefore, it becomes... 892.6262 kg that is the weight of this particular pole the pole is in the shape of cylinder there are two cylinder one is fatter cylinder another one is a small cylinder how nice problem see there is a pole i repeat there is a pole which comprises of two cylinders of different radii and different height and this pole is made by iron we have to find the mass of that particular pole for that purpose, what we did is we calculated the volume of the total pole by, by adding the volume of two separate cylinders. After finding the volume, the for 1 cc of volume, what is the mass that is given in the problem, that is 8 grams, multiply by the uh, volume calculated, you get total mass of the pole, that is 892.262 kgs. This is problem number 6 of 15.2. Now 15.2, again the problem is based on volume of combination of solids. Problem number 7. The first step is analyze the problem properly. Then only you can easily solve the problem and you have to write it down. 
simply seeing video is no use you sit and write along with me you can easily solve and it is like investigation type of problems you can easily understand and this is the problem that uh, makes you to understand your iq how best you analyze the problem see the problem is like this a solid consists of consisting of a right circular cone of height 120 cm and radius 60 cm there is a cone of height 120 cm and radius 60 cm standing on a hemisphere there is another solid that is hemisphere of radius 60 cm is placed upright in a circular cylinder one more uh, solid is there that is cylinder in that cylinder is full of water now we have to keep these two solids inside that cylinder which contains water then how much of water is left in the cylinder that we have to calculate see the problem is like this see here there is a cone height of the cone is 120 cm and uh, radius is 60 cm there is another solid that is that we write uh, cone height is 120 cm and radius is 60 cm given they have only given radius there is no need to calculate anything height is there radius is there we can easily find the volume of this cone by the formula v is equal to 1 by 3 pi r square h the next solid is hemisphere hemisphere what is given radius is 60 cm given it is hemisphere uh, only radius is given what is the volume of the hemisphere volume of the hemisphere is uh, 2 by 3 pi r cube radius is given over then there is a cylinder that is filled with water and the cylinder is of height 180 cm and uh, radius is 60 cm we can easily find the volume of this cylinder also that is pi r square h is the formula this cylinder is filled with water right now what he did is he kept hemisphere inside the cylinder like this on this hemisphere he kept the cone now what happens some amount of the water is came out some amount of water remains inside the cylinder now inside the cylinder what are there inside the cylinder there is hemisphere there is a cone and also water now we know the hemisphere and cone are there then how much of water remains in the cylinder that we have to calculate find the volume of the water left in the cylinder first it was completely filled to the brim after that we kept this hemisphere and the cone now some amount of water is remain in that particular cylinder that we have to calculate how to calculate very simple water volume of water left in the cylinder is equal to volume of the cylinder first we have to find the volume of the cylinder that is the volume of the water present in the cylinder minus minus what we kept inside volume of the hemisphere we kept that volume we have to separate we have to remove minus volume of the cone volume of the cone also we have to remove from the volume of the cylinder if you subtract volume of the cylinder is nothing but the volume of the water from the volume of the cylinder if you subtract the volume of the hemisphere and uh, volume of the cone then you can easily understand how much of water is left inside the cylinder that is the amount of water present inside the cylinder i repeat once again there is a cylinder of radius 60 cm and height 180 cm filled with water inside that cylinder is a hemisphere is put above that a cone is put now the inside the cylinder what are there hemisphere is there cone is there and water is there now how much of water is there inside the cylinder to calculate what you have to find this volume of the cylinder minus volume of the hemisphere minus volume of the cone here is the formula volume of the cylinder is pi r square h minus volume of the hemisphere is 2 by 3 pi r cube minus volume of the cone 1 by 3 pi r square h 1 by 3 pi r square h here be careful about h h of the cylinder is different from h of the cone right but here there is something is common all pi is common and radius is common radius is all radius is equal to 60 therefore it is better to remove the common factor and simplify otherwise it becomes very lengthy and 
we use pi as 3.14. See, I remove pi r square as common. In every term, there is a pi r square. Remove pi r square. Because it is common. Radius is 60, 60, 60. Hemisphere radius is 60. Cone radius is 60. Cylinder radius is 60. Remove. Pi common. Then what is left? Inside the bracket, h of the cylinder, that is the height of the cylinder, minus 2 by 3 r. 2 by 3 uh, r is uh, 60 minus 1 by 3 h of the cone. h of the cone. Now we substitute that. Pi is equal to 22 by 7 I write now. Then later I change to 3.14. 22 by 7 into 60 into 60. Uh, within bracket h of cylinder h of cylinder is 180 see the data part h is a cylinder height is 180 minus 2 by 3 radius radius is 60 into 60 minus 1 by 3 into height of the cone height of the cone given data data see height of the cone is equal to 120 now the next part is simplification part there are three solids cylinder cone and hemisphere right now cancellation is 320 is a 60 340 is a 120 i cancel that then what is left now? the left part is 22 by 7 that is pi into 60 into 60 60 into 60 3600 66 or 36 two zeros and inside the bracket 180 minus 2 into 20, 40, minus 1 into 40, 40. Now, 2 into 7 into, 22 by 7 into, 3600, 22 by 7 into, 3600 into 100. But pi is, the value of pi is what? 3.14, if we cancel, because the no number is divisible by 7 therefore I uh, change 22 by 7 as 3.14 3.14 into 3600 into 100 easy to multiply because the more number of zeros are there we got 11 uh, lakh 30,400 cubic centimeter see this is in the cubic centimeter now we have to convert this in the form of cubic meter how to convert 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter, right? 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. Cubic to meter means 100 into 100 into 100. Therefore, 1 followed by 6 zeros. 1 followed by 6 zeros. Therefore, after 6 points, after 6 digits, you have to put a point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Therefore, it becomes 1.13 cubic meter. I repeat once again. 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. Here we are calculated cubic meter. Therefore, cubic centimeter is divided by 1 followed by 6 zeros. 100 into 100 into 100, 6 zeros. It becomes cubic meter. 1.13 cubic meter. That is the answer for the problem number 7 of 15.2. The problem is very nice. It is there is a, there is, there is a cylinder filled with water. And inside the cylinder, a hemisphere is kept and another one, a core is kept. Then, the inside the cylinder, what are there now? Some amount of water, a hemisphere and the core. We have to find the volume of the water left inside the cylinder. For that purpose, what we did is, we calculated the volume of the cylinder minus volume of the hemisphere minus volume of the core. We get volume of the water left inside the cylinder. And that water is this uh, that is 1.13 cubic meter how to convert cubic centimeter into cubic meter i told you 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter cubic meter means 1 follow 10 to the power of 6 1 followed by 6 zeros you have to write and divide this is problem number 7 right now 15.2 problem number 8 again analyze the problem properly then you can easily solve this it is not problems are not solved lengthier problem that's all a spherical glass vessel has a cylindrical neck a spear a conical glass vessel 
as a cylindrical like this type of glass vessels you have seen in the chemistry lab a spherical glass vessel has a cylindrical neck 8 cm long 2 cm in diameter the diameter of the spherical part is 8.5 cm by measuring the amount of water in it it holds a child finds its volume to be 345 cc check whether she is correct taking the above as inside measurement and pi is equal to 3.14 to, to check the value is correct or not we have to find the volume we have to solve the problem if the, when we solve the problem when we get the answer as 3, uh, 3, 345 cc then it is right if it is different from 345 cc then the uh, uh, answer is what the child made is wrong okay now first see this is the glass vessel it is having a spherical glass vessel having a cylindrical neck neck is cylinder and body is spear height of the neck height of the neck is 8 cm diameter of the neck is 2 cm diameter given means you have to find the radius right and uh, diameter of the spear is uh, 8.5 diameter of the spear is 8.5 first we write the given part of separate separately first is now I put the cylindrical part is in the blue color right cylinder cylindrical part what is the height 8 cm what is the diameter 2 cm and the diameter is given radius is 1 cm cylinder part is over we know the volume formula for the volume of a cylinder so apply you can get the volume of the cylinder that's it but uh, that easy it is volume of the cylinder formula is pi r square so apply this values you get the volume of the cylindrical part that is neck part then the spherical part spherical part is diameter is 8.5 centimeter 8.5 means radius is equal to 4.25 centimeter now the total volume of the glass vessel is what do you add volume of the cylinder plus volume of the sphere volume of the glass vessel is equal to volume of the sphere plus volume of the cylinder volume of the sphere plus volume of the cylinder formula you know that volume of the sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube volume of the cylinder is pi r square h now what happened be careful about the radius are different the radius are different the cylinder is different and the uh, sphere is different 4 by 3 pi should be taken as 3.14 beginning only I take uh, 3.14 r cube that is the radius of the sphere radius of the sphere is 4.25 3 times you have to write 4.25 into 4.25 into 4.25 all these problems having lot of lot of multiplication plus pi 3.14 r square this is the radius of the cylinder that is 1 1 into 1 into height of the cylinder is 8 the only thing is you have to in the working column you have to multiply all these things it becomes 964.18 if you multiply 4 into 3.14 into 4.25 into 4.25 into 4.25 you get 964.18 by 3 denominator is 3 plus if you multiply 3.14 into 8 you get 25.12 right now what you have to do you have to take LCM and add when you take LCM and add 964.18 plus 75.36 divided by 3 add the numerator it becomes 1039.54 by 3 and if you cancel by 3 you get 346.51 cc cubic centimeter that is the total volume of the uh, glass vessel the child calculated as 345 cc then the value what she calculated the child calculated is wrong it is wrong it is not 345 cc the correct answer is 346.51 cc accurately that is the answer therefore uh, is it right no it is not right and the measure, uh, correct answer is 346.51 cc is the correct answer see this is a spherical glass vessel having a spherical body and a cylindrical neck 
height of the cylindrical neck is 8 cm and the diameter is 2 cm. Using that we can find the radius that is 1 cm. And spherical part is diameter is 8.5 therefore radius is equal to 4.3. If you wanted to find the volume of the whole vessel, you have to add the volume of sphere plus volume of the cylinder. You know the formula for the volume of a sphere. 4 by 3 pi r cube is the sphere. Pi r square h is for the cylinder. Substitute and multiplication, simplification and finally you get 346.51 cc is the answer. This problem is the last problem of exercise 15.2. I completed all the problems given in the textbook related to volume of combination of solids and now we go to the next part. The next part is conversion of solid from one shape to another. This is the third subunit of this particular chapter. Here little bit understanding is required. Without that we can't solve the problems. Conversion of a solid from one shape to another. See children, first you have to understand. If any matter is there, but whichever shape it may be, a shape is having a volume. If you change the shape, volume doesn't change. Only the shape changes. Therefore, if you have, imagine there is a cylindrical candle. Cylindrical candle. It is melted and put it in the form of a cuboidal shape. What happened? When a cylindrical shape, shape is cylinder, but it is having some amount of volume. So the, when it converted in the form of a cuboid, the volume remains the same, but shape changes. I explain in another way. See, I am having 1 liter of water. This is 1 liter. 1 liter. That is the volume of water. I take one glass and I take one cone shaped glass. Two glasses are there. I have taken one liter of water, two glasses. One glass is in the cylindrical shape, another glass is in the conical shape. If I pour water into the cylindrical glass, the water occupies the shape of the cylinder. It looks like a cylinder. But what is the volume of that, that water? One liter only. The volume of that water is 1 liter only. To calculate that one, I am applying the formula of the volume of the cylinder. That is, pi r square h has to be applied to get the volume of this water. But I know the volume of the water is 1 liter because I, I measured and poured into the glass. If I pour to the uh, conical glass, here, again I know that I, I poured only 1 liter of water. The volume is 1 liter. But the shape is in the cone. To calculate that volume, I am applying the formula of volume of the cone. Here shape changes but the volume remains the same. Here both the glasses are in 1 litre of water. To calculate 1 litre of water in the cylindrical glass, I am applying the formula pi r square h. To calculate the volume of water present in the conical glass, cone shaped glass, I am applying the formula 1 by 3 pi r square h. Formula may differ but volume is not going to differ. If the matter is same, same matter, even if change the shape, volume remains the same. That you have to remember. You take one huge ragi ball, make it to two, 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 two or four smaller balls. The total volume of the two or more smaller balls is equal to same volume of the bigger ragi ball. The same thing it is. Therefore, shape can be changed. Volume cannot be changed if matter is same. Don't think about the density part. Don't put physics in that. <laughs> Understand the maths part. Be careful about the matter. Here I, I, I gave an example of water. All the things are water only. Don't take water one, another one milk. No, then physics comes. Don't put in the same matter. Even if the shape changes, Volume remains the constant that you have to remember here. Shape changes but volume remains the same. This particular thing if you understand then you can easily solve the problems related to this particular subunit that is conversion of solid from one shape to another shape. In this particular unit what they do is there is some amount of uh, volume you have to calculate from one shape and you have to modify that uh, matter into some other shape. And there you have to find height, breadth, something you have to calculate. Therefore, 
when the volume remain the same same matter changes into different shape the volume remain the same here yeah, the under most underlying part is same matter should be the same then only the volume remains the same shape changes right that we are going to learn in this particular unit of conversion of solid from one shape to another shape now we start solving the problems of exercise um, 15.3 that is based on conversion of solid from one shape to another problem number 1 a metallic sphere of radius 4.2 cm is melted and recast into the shape of cylinder of radius 6 cm find the height of the cylinder very simple easiest problem it is see there is a metal sphere metal sphere is there of radius uh, 4.2 cm this sphere is melted same material melted and recast in the shape of a cylinder before we write the uh, variables of the sphere radius of the sphere is 4.2 cm it is given this metal sphere is melted and recasted in the shape of a cylinder and the radius of the cylinder is 6 cm radius of the cylinder is 6 cm now we have to find the height of the cylinder what is the height of the cylinder same material it was in the shape of a sphere of radius 4.2 cm and it is melted and recast in the shape of a cylinder of radius 6 cm now we have to find the height of the cylinder all variables are given radius of the sphere is given as 4.2 cm radius of the cylinder is given as 6 cm we have to find height of the cylinder we all know that when a matter is changed in shape the volume remains the same same matter therefore volume of the sphere is equal to volume of the cylinder volume of the sphere is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube and volume of the cylinder is pi r square h when you substitute these values these two values should be equal right now in this case i substitute 4 by 3 pi r cube stands for 4.2 into 4.2 into 4.2 equals pi r square h pi into 6 into 6 that is the radius of the cylinder we don't know the value of h h remains as h only this type of problem the easiest part is always all, all formulas they contain pi except in the case of a cube and cuboid in remaining places we get pi therefore we can easily eliminate that pi pi is eliminated in both sides and 4 by 3 the 3 is divided divides 4.2 by 4, 1.4 times the pi is eliminated denominator is eliminated the remaining part is 4 into 1.4 into 4.2 into 4.2 equals 6 into 6 into h now only one variable left that is h therefore you have to find the value of h therefore h is equal to 4 into 1.4 into 4.2 into 4.2 divided by 6 into 6 now simple uh, cancellation 6 ones are 6 0 point sevens are 4.2 6 sevens are 42 6 into 0 0.7 is equal to 4.2 cancels then what is left h is equal to 4 into 1.4 into 0 0.7 into 0 0.7 now multiplication multiply all these values you get h is equal to 2.74 centimeter see how nice problem how easy problem it is you have to write the you have to know the value of the formula for the volume of two solids one is sphere another one is the cylinder the sphere radius is 4.2 and cylinder radius is 6 we have to find the height of the cylinder the same material the sphere is recasted melted and recasted in the shape of a cylinder therefore what we do is we compare the volume of the sphere with the volume of the cylinder and by removing the common factors we can find the value of h and in this case h is equal to 2.74 cm it is easy problem it is exercise 5.15.3 and we are in the problem number 1 now the problem number 2 this is also one of the easiest problem see metal spheres of radius 6 cm 8 cm and 10 cm 
respectively are melted to form a single solid sphere. Find the radius of the resulting sphere. Three spheres are there. One is of 6 cm, 8 cm and 10 cm. Three spheres. 6, 8 and 10. The radii of the sphere are 6 cm, 8 cm and 10 cm. I write R1, R2, R3. R1 is equal to 6 cm, R2 is equal to 8 cm, R3 is equal to 10 cm. It is given in the problem. Now what, what he did is, he melted all the three, made one sphere. Using these three spheres, he made one bigger sphere, like this. Now we have to find the radius of the resulting sphere. What is the radius of that bigger sphere which is formed by melting of, melting and recasting of the smaller spheres of radii 6, 8 and 10 cm. Here what happened, volume of the resulting sphere, that is the bigger sphere, is equal to volume of some of the volumes of the three smaller sphere. Therefore, volume of the resulting sphere is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. I consider V1 as the volume of the sphere number 1, V2 as sphere number 2, V3 as sphere number 3 because I have taken radii R, R, R1, R2 and R3. We know that formula of the sphere is equal to 4 by 3 pi R cube. Then it becomes volume of the bigger sphere that is 4 by 3 pi r cube I taken capital letter r for representing the radius of the resulting sphere because since it is a bigger sphere 4 by 3 pi r cube equals 4 by 3 r1 cube plus 4 by 3 pi r2 cube plus 4 by 3 pi r3 cube three spheres before simply uh, uh, substituting the values here we have to remove the common factor because otherwise the problem becomes too lengthy. What we can do is, on both sides, we have 4 by 3 pi as a common. Remove that. See, we can write it like this. 4 by 3 pi capital R cube is equal to 4 by 3 pi of R1 cube plus R2 cube plus R3 cube. Here what happened, the advantage is we can remove this 4 by 3, 4 by 3. Both sides 4 by 3 are there. Both sides pi is there. Gone. Thus, it makes us to do simplification much easier. See, now the left part is R cube is equal to R1 cube plus R2 cube plus R3 cube. Now you substitute. R1 is equal to 6 cm, R2 is equal to 8 cm and R3 is equal to 10 cm. Capital R cube, that is the radius of the bigger sphere. The, the sphere which is going to form after melting and combining the smaller spheres. R cube is equal to 6 cube plus 8 cube plus 10 cube. 6, 8 and 10 are radius of the smaller spheres. Now very simple simplification it is. We bifurcate the board. 6 cube, 216, 8 cube, 512, 10 cube is 1000. 6 cube is 6 into 6 into 6. 8 into 8 into 8 is 8 cube. 10 into 10 into 10 is 10 cube. By adding this R cube is equal to 1728, you have to add 216, 512 and 1000, you get 1728. R cube is equal to 1728, then R is equal to cube root of 1728. Now how to find the cube root of a number? Cube root of a number can be, we can calculate by using factor method. Factor method means by dividing the number by the usually prime factors. 2, 3, 5, like that prime factor. Sometimes if you know the values, then you can directly write the numbers like this. See, what I did is 1728 is divided by 2 means 864 comes. Again divided by 2, you get 432. Again divided by 2, you get 216. But 216, I know that uh, 216 is nothing but the uh, cube of 6. Therefore, 6, 36, 6, 6. Therefore, now I can write this number 1728 as 2 cube into 6 cube. Therefore, R is equal to cube root of 2 cube into 6 cube. Now, you can remove the root, cube root. Then R is equal to 2 into 6. Cube root of 2 cube is 2. Cube root of 6 cube is 6. R is equal to 2 into 6. Therefore, R is equal to 12 centimeter. 2 into 6 is what? 12. 12 centimeter is the answer for this particular question. Easy question.
three metal spheres of radius 6, 8 and 10 are melted to form a bigger sphere. Now we have to find the radius of the resulting bigger sphere. So the volume of the resulting sphere, bigger sphere is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 means sum of the volumes of the smaller spheres. Volume of the sphere formula is 4 by 3 pi r cube. We comparing both the volume of the bigger sphere is equal to volume sum of the volumes of the smaller spheres. Remove the common factor that is 4 by 3 pi remove. Then you get r cube. Then you to find r you to take cube root of that number. Cube root of can be calculated by factorization. Usually it is called the prime factorization. If you have a time and to understand this, you can since you don't have the chapter called real numbers. In the real numbers, prime factorization is there. And you can do it. Uh, always you have to remove by prime number. Six, I, I removed six. In front of six, you can first take two and then take three. Prime factorization and group them into three, three groups and you can find the cube root. That is a method of finding the cube root. This method is called factor is factor method. R is equal to 2 into 6. R is equal to 12 centimeter. 